Hey guys, I'm Randy Unger, and this is another episode of Unger the Radar, where we talk all things film and sometimes TV. And with me, as always, I have a wonderful panel of guest critics. We have uh, Mr. Forrest Bennett. Welcome back, sir. Randy, thanks for having me back on. Of course, of course. Always welcome. And through Zoom, Mr. Matt Roran. Matt Roran, welcome back, sir. Hello. Always a pleasure to be here, whether in person or virtually. Yes, of course. You're always here. Your spirit is always in the show, so... <laughs> Gotta love that. Um, all right, guys. So uh, before we get into the fun stuff, I just want to acknowledge uh, a really terrible thing that happened today. Actually, two things. Uh, there was a shooting in Brooklyn, um, mm. and I believe ten people were injured. Uh, yep. So, so you know, we our hearts go out to all the families and 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 everyone involved with that. Um, that was, I believe, in the morning. I'm, yes. Um, yeah, that was in Brooklyn. And suspect is still at large at this, as of this record, this episode. Yeah, so hopefully the police will nab him soon. And uh, yeah, he will face justice. Um, and also another awful thing that happened today, a uh, beloved comedian and actor, Gilbert Godfrey, passed away at the age of 67. Uh, he had a, a long illness he was battling and uh he he finally passed away and i'm st i'm still in shock yeah i know i was yeah. like <laughs> why well, i couldn't believe i couldn't believe it. you know this is like we, we've been getting too many of these lately because this is like like the bob saget norm mcdonald like where it's like louis like, anderson oh, yeah Lou, yeah like you know it, it's been happening free very frequently and it's it sucks yeah, and, uh, um, I feel like Gilbert Godfrey roasted all of them. <laughs> yeah, 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 like wow, yeah, it's like it's like oh my god, there's a killer on the loose. They're they're all roast people. Where's Jeffrey Ross? <laughs> yeah, he no, he was a legend. Um, I really know him best from my childhood. Uh, obviously, the Problem Child films and Aladdin. Iago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 I was never quite, you know, I was never big on the child on the problem child movies, but definitely uh, uh, Iago is in Aladdin and uh, any animated series. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Actually, and also uh, Mr. Mix's Piltic in <laughs> Superman, the animated Superman series. The animated as series. well as like, you know, he, he had because he appeared in so many movies and TV shows yeah. and cartoons. Oh, yeah. Um, actually, one of my favorite moments of his was because uh, back, you know, he was because he was a regular panelist on Hollywood Squares. Mm -hmm. And I remember one episode. They, they they only got through one round because every because oh so he was like the last square on the board mm -hmm. and um and uh like none of the contestants could get the answers right mm -hmm. on the questions and so after a while he just got frustrated and just started screaming you fool <laughs> at the contestants he was so great yeah, no, he's incredible i mean you know it's, it's some of my earliest memories of him was actually uh the one season of sarah Night live that he was on Oh wow, uh, <laughs> that was like the eighties, wasn't it? Yeah, it was like I think it was. I think it was the the eighty one season. Oh wow, the one, mm -hmm. first one with Eddie Murphy and Joe Piscopo, nice. eighty eighty one. But it, it's like I remember being so young, and they did like a parody of Kung Fu, the mm -hmm. the TV show where he was like the the Kung Fu master. Mm -hmm. It was like you're so stupid. Like <laughs> it was like. Uh, like, you know, that, I mean, he was in so many movies, Problem Child, of course, yeah. uh, and of course, being the only person to also do the Problem Child animated series. And <laughs> also, uh, Look Who's Talking to. I remember he had a, yeah, yeah. And a, a very small part in Beverly Hills Cop 2. Yes. Yeah. Uh, very funny. Um, I mean, even, even, you know, he did, uh, uh, oh God, what was that? One of the PBS shows that my kids used to watch, he was a voice on. Oh, and it was that. like some educational show. He, he did been, like he was all over. Yeah, and it, that, yeah, you know, it's really like voice. And you always yeah. know it's him. You know, it's like there's yeah. no doubt about it. You know. Oh, a funny thing. Because that, apparently, Howard because Howard Stern had gotten a recording of him because that was not his real voice. Right? Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. Howard Stern played a recording of his real voice. He's kind of like a very like he had like a quiet, very monotone type. Yeah, voice. he's like he's like. He's very cool. yeah. The guy, huh. the guy yeah. was like a was an unsung master of of not breaking character. Right. Yeah. Well, it's it's like for 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 how how long did you know Bobcat Goldthwait go go on? Also, you know, 
without people realizing that he doesn't really talk like this. Like, yeah. you know, it's like, ah! You well, know, he, it's, I, you know, it's character. Early. Yeah. Also, but yeah, like, Gilbert, yeah, they, yeah, Gilbert was really one of a kind. Yeah, no, he was... And, and also, and, uh, also uh, his comedy itself, the content oh, of his yeah. comedy, very controversial. That's so funny. Didn't he make? I think he was one of the first comedians after 9 11 to make a joke on it and like kind yeah. of. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and then he, he made, he, he made uh, a joke about Japan. Yeah. Uh, well, and he got, got fired from Aflac because he was, he was the original voice of the Aflac duck. Yeah, I remember right, that. Right, right. He was. Um, but yeah, even, even later in, in life, you know, it was like he it was still entertained me through reality shows. Mm-hmm. Uh, his his uh, stint on Celebrity Apprentice, uh, constantly pissing <laughs> off Geraldo. He pissed off Geraldo Rivera a bunch of times. It was incredible. Uh, and then my one of my f- absolute favorite things, uh, Celebrity Wife Swap. Him and Alan Thicke swapped wives. Oh, God. <laughs> and like Alan, like and Alan Thicke's like. I oh I I know Gilbert from like you know when I had a talk show and like whatever like he like hated it. like he's like I I hate that guy I absolutely hate that <laughs> so it's like it was just like so funny and like like uh, Alan Dick's like so uptight and like Gilbert Gottfried's like it's like just so ridiculous and like Alan Dick's wife simultaneously had so much fun with him but also was like. Was kind of disgusted by him. He was like, like shopping Dollar Tree and stuff like that. And she was like, <laughs> "Oh my god!" Well, also, I, I wanted to mention there was this really great documentary that came out a couple years back called Gilbert, which was oh. about his his life, his career, yeah. his personal mm-hmm. life. And yeah. they screened that at the Tribeca Film Festival, and it was just one of the best films that year that, that I saw. Yes. Um, so that's and, and of of course his, uh, you know. Uh, con- contribution to the aristocrats. Oh, yes, <laughs> a legend, a true comedy, true, legend. true, absolute legend in film and television, too. Just yeah, in film and television, too. You know, and yeah, we're, we're always gonna think back and laugh at everything he's done. And mm-hmm. yeah. he, he left behind a great legacy, and I'm and I, I wish him, his family, uh, you know, just the very best during this difficult time. So, Gilbert, we will miss you, sir. <laughs> All right, guys. So before we get into the uh, film reviews, I just want to do um, just real quick what we're watching this week currently. Um, I know we were off last week. So, uh, Matt, uh, what, what are you busy with these days? What you- uh, I've been, um, uh, since they landed uh, home at Disney Plus, mm-hmm. I've been rewatching uh, and finishing up the Defenders franchise. Uh, Daredevil, Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, Iron Fist, uh, mm-hmm. Punisher. Uh, so I, it, it's one of those things I, uh, at the time when it started, I was watching them on the big screen at, at the cinema uh, after work. And then my <laughs> buddy that, that I was uh, watching it with left the cinema, moved. So I got kind of stopped after Luke Cage season one. So I've, I've been catching up and like whatever and it's <laughs> enjoyable. And I've also been watching uh, old episodes of Ironside. Uh, so, so, some uh, some classic uh, wheelchair detective stuff. So, oh, it's, oh, it's, not, it's not Michael. It's not. I like, was thinking Michael. Michael Ironside. Iron, uh, Michael yeah. Ironside. No, no, Raymond Burr. <laughs> He's a, a family man and uh, with a gruff voice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would watch that. Yeah. It's Raymond Burr in a wheelchair, <laughs> and he's yeah. It's like. Every because it's like late sixties, early seventies, so it's like every episode is like about how they hate hippies, so like ah, hippies, <laughs> marijuana making kids kill themselves. You know, it's, yeah, uh, it's pretty great. It's uh, highly enjoyable. Is that in the same vein as the the Jimmy Stewart uh, show from the seventies called Hawkins? Uh, I've never seen that actually. Okay. So, right. Surprising. I just, I just know that because of the theme song. The theme was. It's kind of by- like. It, it, I mean, it's like. <laughs> the police version of Matlock, mm-hmm. I guess. I don't know. It's like Matlock is the is the the law part. This is the order part, or <laughs> which is, is law and order the opposite? And law is the cops, order is the the court. But yeah. it's it, but it's a it's like a, it's a cop show. I mean, okay. it's, 
it's it's basically like you know an old school cop show um you know there's the series starts out where uh he gets shot and then ends up in a wheelchair okay uh he no mm-hmm. longer uses his legs but like continues to go on and literally it's seven seasons of someone you you used to know is here to visit you like it's like oh okay and then you find out that that person's a bad guy uh, like, it's a little like like oh my old friend is a villain like you know it's like who who's the who plays Ironside? It's it's Raymond Burr. Oh, okay, cool, mm-hmm. cool. Okay, I, yeah, I've heard of it. Yeah, yeah. So it. yeah, but there's you know a lot of a lot of interesting uh, you know cameos and stuff too because you know the the time period you're get, you got like all the Star Trek guys like off of Star Trek being canceled. <laughs> so it's like oh, it's like here's Chekhov as a hippie. Here's you know <laughs> Captain Captain Kirk. You know like. That's funny. It, it, you know, it's, it's, it's funny. Okay. I love it. It sounds fun. Um, as for us, actually, Farts and I, we've, we've been spending a lot of time together at these the, screenings and events lately. Yeah. Um, we were very fortunate enough to go to the Alamo Draft House a couple weeks back. We saw Army of Darkness. Yep. Actually, I saw, actually, I saw the whole Evil Dead trilogy. Oh, there. you saw all of them? Oh, okay. this past month. That's awesome. Uh, nice. but, but Army of Darkness, up until, up until last month, Army of Darkness was the only movie in the in the Evil Dead franchise that I had not seen in theaters, so oh, I was man. able to complete, complete, complete the the, the stream. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, and I'm happy I was there for that that milestone. Yeah, huh. I and, love seeing those movies on the big oh, screen. They're so much fun. Yes, they're all Raimi. So yeah, well, I, I think you know, Evil to me, Evil Dead's the one horror, fran- horror franchise that gets better with every sequel. Yeah, it really does. Not the reboots, though. <laughs> Definitely not. The I still movie. haven't seen the reboot. <laughs> oh, that's all right. Uh, I, yeah. I mean, from the first viewing, I I was totally turned off. Uh, I mean, it's all right, but it doesn't like have it. It doesn't have, uh, but like, it doesn't have any good one liners. Like, you yeah. know, yeah, there's, there's like no humor in it. There's and, no groovy. Yeah, yeah, Jane Levy, like Jane Levy, I love her, but uh, yeah. she's yeah, no she's great. Fan. <laughs> right, right, right. Um, but yeah, Army of Darkness, such a fun movie. Uh, wish okay. we spent during uh, Halloween. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Uh, maybe they'll bring it back. Uh, we also saw your favorite movie of all time, Aliens, Aliens. In the Midnight Showing. Yeah, that was great. Yeah. And the movie never gets it's old no. either, um, especially on the big screen. Yeah, uh, um. it's like every time, every ch- if I every chance I get, I try to catch it in theaters. And this is my yeah. second time. Although I lo- would love it if they would play the play the uncut version. Oh, the yeah. director's the cut. cut. Yeah. yeah, if they if if ever did a theatrical screen of the of the director's cut. Yeah, maybe we'll get that eventually. Yeah. Um, but I'm I was pretty satisfied with the uh, the theatrical. Uh, and also rounding out the stuff that we got to see recently together, at least. Uh, yeah. Uh, Randy Edelman in concert. Yeah, that was pretty at, exciting. At the Chelsea Table and Stage. It's a wonderful venue. It's actually in the basement of a Hilton in Midtown. Uh, well, 26th Street. Yeah. Um, and basically, it's it's renowned film composer and musician Randy Edelman of Ghostbusters 2, 2 fame. fame. Uh, My cousin Vinny. Kindergarten Cop. Twins. Mask. Twins. Um, you know, he, yeah, Dragonheart, MacGyver, yeah, the MacGyver theme. Uh, and, oh, yeah, but he's just be playing pieces from, from yeah. his various movie and TV scores, right? That was really fun on piano. I love the little, fun. uh, the little stories he had between each excerpt that he would play, mm-hmm. uh, after each piece. It just, it, it made the, the whole performance just very relaxed yeah. and it just felt fun, warm, yeah. And uh, so that was a lot of fun. It was actually. Uh, my third time seeing Randy Edelman in person perform. Uh, the first time I was fortunate enough to interview him. Uh, that interview is actually on the YouTube channel, so check it out whenever you can. Uh, but this is our third performance, and I believe there's going to be some more coming up. So we'll keep you guys posted mm-hmm. regarding that. Um, um, yeah. and, and then as far as like what I've been watching, like besides, you know, without you, I mean, yeah. uh, so far I've, I mean, I, I watched all five seasons of head of the class oh wow uh which i hadn't really wa- which i i had a vague memory of watching as a small child mm-hmm. uh but i decided to give it a rewatch. get recently give but uh with the recent passing of howard hessman right i decided to give uh to give it a rewatch. i think the whole i mean <laughs> uh great very fun, you know a nice feel good show great theme great theme um i yeah. think it's, personally i think it's a much better high school show than saved by the bell you think um, better? Yes. Really? Definitely. To me, it's, okay. I, mean, I mean, it's a feel-good show like Save the Bell, but it's not as saccharine or, mm. it, and it, um, mm. and also, also like, I also, 
I think both teachers, like Howard Hessman and Billy Connolly, were excellent in their own right. Mm, yeah. um, and uh, as besides that, I've also been and now. So now I'm trying to find a new show to watch while I, while I do while I work. Um, Maybe Ironside. <laughs> and, and then uh, and then and then uh, on the movie end of things, um, I saw a documentary called uh, Dead Guy about a New Jersey hardcore band that like only put out they only put out like two albums in the nineties and then they broke up. Okay. Um, that was really good. Hmm. Uh, oh, it's about Dead Guy, the band? Yeah, the band Dead Guy. Shit. I gotta check that out. I didn't know there was a doc. <laughs> yeah, there's a whole documentary about it. It's really good. I saw it, I saw it at uh at uh Williams Theater in, in New Jersey. Oh, that's um, awesome. gotcha. also, yeah, I also saw um Shakespeare Shitstorm, yeah, uh, right. which is fr from Trauma. Right. Uh, it is Lloyd Co Co Kaufman's last movie as a director. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, I didn't know he was. Uh... Yes, he's retiring from directing after this oh, movie. That's crazy. Um, wow. to, uh, it's uh, it's basically a scatological take on on Shakespeare's The Tempest. Um, okay. <laughs> so a lot of literal bathroom humor, and as well as. As well, and they do go quite a bit of skewering of uh, there's quite a lot of skewering of the pharmaceutical industry and cancel culture. You know, side note, I'm, I'm thinking of an, a, not a, it's not a trauma film, but I believe it has kind of elements of a trauma film. Uh, the Greasy Strangler. Oh, yes. I've, you guys seen that, I've seen that one. <laughs> Very, yeah. Like, it's, what part it's trauma, out there. John Waters. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It, it's out there, man. It's yeah. Crazy. And then uh, earlier today, I did an in memoriam viewing of Aladdin for Gilbert Godfrey. Nice. Nicely done. Uh, as for me, uh, actually, right before you came over, Forrest, I watched uh, Swiss Army Man because, oh, nice. yeah, mm -hmm. the the directors Daniels, uh, they did a film that we're going to be discussing yep. in a little while. Actually, and actually, well, actually, head of the actually just just to tie in what we're going to be reviewing. Yes, uh, head of the class. Uh, Ki Hu Kwan. Yeah. Oh. Uh, he, oh, he was one of the students. He was yeah. one of the students that's, in the la, in the la, in the later in the last two seasons of the show. Oh, that's great. That's great. Now I have to go back and watch. Yeah. That. Also, <laughs> actually, actually, I almost, almost forgot X. That's an uh, Ty West's X. That's another one I saw recently mm -hmm. about a about a about a porno film crew that gone uh, wrong. Got, so uh, wrong. That, yeah, a porno film crew gone wrong. But you know what I liked about X? It, it kind of felt like an old school, late seventies, early eighties horror film, kind of straightforward. Yeah, very. You know? Yeah, I paid a lot of homage to 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 the the, the industry. Yes, mm -hmm. it, actually, it was like it was like one part Texas Chainsaw Massacre, one part Toxic Avenger, <laughs> one part uh, Boogie Nights, and one part Home Alone. Yeah, it, and somehow <laughs> they and somehow Ty West managed to put all those movies together and make it work. Yeah. I, yeah, I, it was a lot of fun. It was freaky as hell, very disturbing yeah. at some points, but sit through the whole thing. It's worth it mm -hmm. for sure, for sure. Um, and also uh, randomly, because uh, during the Rainy Edelman concert, he mentioned Billy Madison. That I didn't even know he scored that. Me neither. So, so I actually uh, checked it out and I, I, I am in the middle of, it's on pause right now. I'm watching Billy Madison again. <laughs> And uh, just to hear his- Stop story. looking at me, Swan. Yeah. No, but it's a penguin. Penguin. Uh, no, but that's, there's a scene in the bathtub where he says, stop looking at me, Swan. Oh, my mistake. <laughs> yes. Classic. Shampoo goes on first. <laughs> <laughs> Shampoo is better. <laughs> Conditioner is better. <laughs> Leave the hair silky and smooth. Uh, what a oh, dumb. Stupid, wonderful <laughs> film. It's great. It's great. Um, yeah, so basically that's what I'm watching and, uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun. So, okay, guys, let's get into our first review. Uh, we've got Sonic the Hedgehog 2, which is a sequel to the 2020, uh, film, which I think is a lot better than this one personally. Uh, I, I actually like this one more. You like this one more. Okay. Me, I, I actually more. like this one more too. Really? I, I, Cause I feel like it brought, you know, they brought back, you know, they brought, they brought back a lot. They brought in a lot more characters from the games mm -hmm. like knuckles and tails yeah you know robotnik looks more like robotnik in this one i just think it was and, kind and of it was kind of all over the place i feel me. I, to me i feel like they they definitely incorporate overall incorporate a lot, a lot more elements of the games right it feels more like the game come to life in this one so here's this nuts when the manic dr robotnik returns to earth with a new ally knuckles the enchida enchidna en uh, kidna, <laughs> kidna, kidna. sonic and his new friend tails is all that stands in their way and we've got pretty much uh, the main cast from the first film returning. Ben Schwartz is the voice, mm -hmm. voice of Sonic. 
We've got James Marsden in a much lesser role here. Um, I'll, I'll roll human, the human, the, a lot, of, a lot of the human characters. The roles are a lot are kind of smaller in this one, which is fine yeah. with me. Yeah, because I'm, yeah. I'm there for, because I'm there for Sonic and for, yeah. Sonic and Knuckles what? and Tails. That, I mean, that's what I liked about the first. I like the kind of that Roger Rabbit human animated yeah. relationship. Uh, but I feel like that's a, that's kind of a trope that's been done to death. I mean, there's that. There's the, you know the Smurfs. Mm -hmm. uh, more the uh, Peter Rabbit, like you know, there you know, yeah. there's so many of those now. Yeah, I don't know. I, it's, it's become it's a trope. I've, I've seen them so many times. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, but, uh, I don't know. I wanted I, more. I, I feel like like I, I'm with Forrest on this one. Like I was there for you know the Sonic characters. Uh, I you know Idris Elba, like I he killed it as Knuckles. Yes. I, I absolutely adored his performance. Yeah. Oh my God. Uh, he, was, I, he was the last person I expected to ever. Expect to, <laughs> he was the last person I expected to be Knuckles, but wow. I know. He, his voice. When they broke. announced that, I'm like, really? <laughs> and yeah, of course, we have Jim Carrey returning as Dr. Robotnik, Robotnik. who I think is perfect in the role. Yes. He's oh, he's really, incredible. I haven't yeah. seen him, uh, you know, dive into a role this great uh, in, 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 in years. Me neither. You know, maybe since I, like yeah, a little sunshine. <laughs> he, he, you know, it's like he. he put it out there that he's you know retiring mm -hmm. uh from acting but he's gonna uh you know he's not like definitely done he's like if something grabs me i'll do it mm -hmm. i definitely would like to see him come back uh at least one more time uh yeah. robotic. well we're, we're i think we are getting a, a third one so I think and, yeah like, and there are and there are and sonic the hedgehog has plenty of enemies besides dr robotnik that if terry decides not to come back true they can always dip dip into the well, mm. into the rogues gallery. Yeah, yeah. And I just love the sense of nostalgia because yes. we all grew up with Sega Genesis, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. I was actually a Super Nintendo kid. I was a Nintendo I, guy. I, I didn't. I I never, you know. But it's like my kids uh, like start watching the cartoons and stuff. So like, yeah, hmm. like my I kids keep, like love Sonic. Like I would play the Sonic games at, at friends' houses, or yeah, I would play at I watch the cartoons on Saturday mornings, right? Um. Yeah, but I, I gotta tell you the the uh, I saw it you know opening night like Friday night with uh, packed house kids like whatever the excitement those those kids were so excited yeah. every time certain characters came on screen uh, the mid credit uh, like thing yeah my they audience, were, my they audience were going nuts the credit scene <laughs> it was like I was like. I'm like, this is good because like all these kids feel like I feel like when I see a Marvel movie, and yeah, I'm like, yeah. I love that. Like they were so excited to be there, and like absolutely loved the shit out of it. It was like such a good feeling to be in that theater. You know, normally being in a theater full of kids, I fucking hate, <laughs> but like here. that that screening, like the kids were like. <laughs> So like in, in like attention to the movie and like they were just excited to be there. And you know what this the the, the first one came out like right at the the beginning of the pandemic I think. Yes, it did. Yeah. So this movie coming out two years later, it's kind of like we've worked we're we're healed. You know, yeah. We, we need this movie. And we've like, circled back around. Yeah. Like, we've, we've circled around like like, <laughs> like Sonic go, like Sonic going through a uh, running through a loop. Yeah, pretty you know? much. In, in the Emerald Zone. It's weird, like the thing that this the first one came out back then and how, yeah, I know. It was how like, different like, things like, are now. You know, came out like February, like you know, a month before the pandemic. You right. know, it's, one of the, one of the, I, probably the last movie I brought my kids to go see. Yeah, I think this was yeah. this or, or or Invisible Man was the last before that. That was the last one I saw. Where was, yeah, was my last one? Before. Which one? Actually, I saw The Hunt. Mm -hmm. The Hunt was the last. One Which one? Was the Hunt. Oh, okay. <laughs> that was the last movie I saw in theaters. The day after I saw Invisible uh, Man. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think that was the last one I brought my kids to with Sonic. So. Okay. Well, that's awesome that you had a great uh, cinematic experience with all. Yeah, movies. it was a lot of fun. It was just me alone in a theater on a, on a Monday night. Uh, <laughs> much different experience. Slightly. No, actually, no. Actually, I caught it on Sunday night. Yeah. Well, actually, and I was like, you know what? Maybe I should have wait. I, maybe I should have gone and see this. Gone and see this movie after nine o'clock because, hmm. uh, I mean, there was kids there, but like, and they were kind of a little loud. But no, the, behind me were like two fanboys who were probably like in, maybe in their teens or, tw or early twenties. Yeah. And they would not. Sh they would not shut up. No. <laughs> Well, uh, 
I, I had terrible experiences at the theater last night with people behind me who wouldn't shut up. Ooh, <laughs> but uh, what is with yeah, people? I, I, when I brought my kids to see the Batman, the yeah, theater yeah. was full of teenagers that were like just running around, Jeez. and it made me so mad. I was so glad I had already seen Batman once. Same here. Uh-huh. Like, because like, if it was my first time seeing it, I would have probably like. <laughs> God, Batman on those kids, but <laughs> I was like, just like, shut up, hello. <laughs> <laughs> Who's on you? Uh, <laughs> Where do you think they're going? Yeah. Justice. Uh, shut up your seat. <laughs> it's like that scene when in Seinfeld when George, uh, he turns back to those teenagers, like, stop kicking the seats and let mm-hmm. us watch the movie. It's actually, it was funny because uh, I kept looking at uh, my daughter Tova and I was like, I was like, oh, can I get like a shit Skittles? It was like, can I get some? And then I kept throwing them at kids every time they picked up their phone. I was like <laughs> hitting them in the back of the head. And they're like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, hold on. Oh, man. Uh, so that was fun. But uh, besides that, like, dude, you're at the theater. Shut up. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Enjoy yeah. a goddamn movie. There's no etiquette anymore. <laughs> it's sad. Especially like, like if it's little kids, like, I get it. You're kids, you yeah. know, whatever. But it's like, Dude, if you're like high school or older, you should know better. Yes. Uh, if you don't have the attention span to be at a theater, stay the fuck home. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Watch. Wait. You know, it'll, it'll come on. It'll come on HBO Max like two weeks later. Right. Right. You can. Spe- be speaking of which, actually, um, when I went to see Sonic, uh, my my eldest daughter, who's now a teenager, uh, asked if we could pick up one of her friends to bring her, uh, and and like, I pick this girl up at her house bought her a movie ticket you know like i've never i'm officially the the, uh, the dad of a teenager driving other people's kids around uh, it's crazy but uh like she got she get getting up through the movie texting like whatever and by the end of the movie she she left <laughs> and i'm like i'm like did <laughs> Am I supposed to bring her home? Like, am I like in- responsible for her? <laughs> like, my daughter's just like, nah, she went home. I'm like, all right, as long as no one's expecting like me to bring her home, I'm like, I'm like weird. Like, what's with she these kids and their attention spans? She didn't even Ooh, tell. She didn't notify you. She didn't even she... tell me. Well, she told my daughter, but like, that's weird. <laughs> it's fucking. <laughs> oh. But kids, well, you know about this movie. What I what was really weird to me was that. I don't want to give anything away. I should have said no spoilers, but there's a there's a wedding scene in the middle of the film that was handled very strangely, and I don't know if you guys like that scene or <laughs> it just it it was just off. <coughs> it was just I don't know. I, but I mean, like I said, it, it's just overloaded. It, it's a it's a decent movie. It's entertaining for sure. I feel like that was part of the. They're like, well, we want something for the human characters to do, the yeah, actual yeah. actors. So was, we're gonna put this wedding in it. It was handled very poorly, I think. Yeah, I, I mean, it, it's it is what it is. Uh, <laughs> it, it, exactly. You know, it, it it was unnecessary. Right, but, but yeah, it does seem like maybe it was just something to they because like you know you got like for, for whatever human characters carried over from the first. Human, non 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 villainous human characters from the first movie for something to give for them to do, <laughs> right? To do, um, and you know what? I I, I do like James Marsden. He he's kind of a, a pretty boy actor. He gets put in a lot of throwaway roles. Yeah, you know, it's like even when he was playing Cyclops. I think he has a lot of potential though as a serious actor. I think. Uh, I don't uh, know much about you his- know uh, what movie totally surprised me. Uh, the D Train. I don't know if you've seen it. It was him and Jack Black. Okay. Uh, I really suggest you see it. <laughs> it's it's one of those things that I saw the trailer a number of times in the theater and was like, oh, I don't want to go see this because it's like, uh, like oh, it's a high school reunion type movie and like James Marsden was the popular guy and right. Jack Black is trying to like get him to come to the reunion because mm-hmm. he's famous. Uh, but it's a weird, twisted, dark comedy. Okay. And the trailer does not let you know what kind of movie it is. And the movie is insane. Nice, but Marsden is incredible in it. Is it like a like an action comedy, a thriller comedy? No, it's like a weird, 
dark comedy. Oh man, like shit gets weird. <laughs> D train, okay. D train, nice. I'm gonna add that to the list for sure. It's um, so weird. <laughs> also, um, Tika Sumter, beautiful, mm-hmm. beautiful actress. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So um, yeah, she was just on the show Mixed Dish, which was the a a spin-off, spin-off prequel of Blackish. Nice. Uh, but uh, starring opposite Mark Paul Gosler, uh, and uh, it was it was a, a fun show, but they just canceled it, so okay. it will not be coming back for a third season. Um, what did you guys think of uh, Ben Schwartz as the voice of Sonic this time around? Oh. He was good. It's okay, right? I, I mean, although although for me, I still so I still I kind of wish they had brought back because uh, he was the voice. He was the voice of. Um, Sonic in the cartoons, and as because and also, yes, <laughs> um, Jaleel White, Jaleel White, yep, he's still working. Yeah, they yeah, he's still got, working. But, know, yeah, why didn't they get him? That's weird. Yeah. Although he, although yeah. Yeah, Ben Schwartz has been the voice of Sonic in cartoons and games for like the last, I think, fifteen years or so. More yeah. Well, I, think I, he- I was, I was excited. Uh, he did one of his, uh, his, his uh, lines from. Uh, uh, Parks and Recreation when he went the worst <laughs> and I uh, I was like yes that was one of the best parts of the movie yes for sure <laughs> nice um so okay guys so that's uh, Sonic the Hedgehog two and um, if you're nostalgic like me you'll you'll enjoy yeah. it same here um, I think it it, it complements the first film really well yeah I think yeah. overall I feel like Sonic is probably the one of the is like the one of the few video games like oh so far today that's to like actually get a decent mm. adaptation yeah yeah um, yeah because yeah. they Definitely. Cause it's, like, it's the problem the problem with a lot of video game movies mm. is they focus tr- too much on trying to make the make the movies look <clears throat> look like feel like the games yeah. rather than focusing on making a movie on, and, a storyline yeah right. Sonic <laughs> has a story and also, like maybe almost thirty years of lore, like between the car- the video games, the cartoons, yeah. and the comics. Now, I believe we are getting an animated Mario movie coming up in the next few. In years, the right? fall. Oh, this fall. Yes. Well, I still say they they try their it, hand at reboot uh, action. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't it? It's it's uh, the the guys who did Lego Movie are doing yes. it. Yes. Yes. Okay. It's them, and with, with you've got Chris Pratt as Mario, Charlie Day as Luigi. And uh, Anya Taylor Joy as Peach, which to me is, which to me, making this animated casting Anya Taylor Joy as Peach and not as Princess Peach and not making it live action yeah. is a missed opportunity. And speaking Definitely. of live action, Mario. He looks identical to. <laughs> I, think, I think Josh Gad would be a perfect live action Mario uh, or Dan, Dan Fogelman. Uh, those, or Dan Fogel. I, I would say Bob. Actually, I would say Bobby Moynihan would be a good Mario. It would be a good, good Mario. Yeah, but he has to be short, portly, well, but that, also athletic. Bobby Moynihan. I would say, yeah, Bobby Moynihan. So it's either Moynihan or Gad, and uh, but I think Jack Black is too old now. <laughs> I don't even think Jack Jack Black would have been in my radar for Mario for Mario. In yeah, this I don't think he has the voice for it. I mean, it's it's. I mean, I love Jack Black, but um, yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't see him as Mario. I see him more of like, a, like a, like he could do Koopa probably very well. Like, you yes, know, like well. he'd be a good villainous, like, <laughs> like over the top, like, <laughs> like or yeah, Wario, yeah. maybe. Yeah, like maybe a Wario. Yeah. But uh, that's a conversation for another time, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> maybe if we do, maybe if we do another sh- commentary, if we do a sh- commentary on Super Mario Brothers, we can get into this. I like that idea. <laughs> all right, to be continued. Um, all right, guys. So we're gonna take a short commercial break, but we'll be back with more movie reviews right after this. Under the Radar is brought to you by Magnitude Jewelry. Add a two to match your attitude. Patent pending interchange genuine gemstone and crystal EMF protection jewelry. For more information, please visit magnitudejewelry.com slash gemgirl or call 
Hey guys, welcome back to the show. Randy Younger under the radar. My wonderful guests, Forrest Bennett, Matt Roran. Thank you guys. We're at the halfway mark. Well, a little bit more. But um, our next film is, um, it's also kind of a fun movie, kind of all over the place, but it is just so good. Uh, and I love it, every second of it. It's called Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. It's the, uh, one of the newest uh, offerings from 824 uh, Productions. And uh, it's strange, <laughs> but I, I really enjoyed it. Uh, Michelle Yeoh basically plays a, a woman, a Chinese immigrant who is in charge of a laundromat who gets sucked into a multiverse of her of her different lives um, mm -hmm. lives that she could have could have lived and could and will and will and and will live and yeah and and, uh, and everything and we're in <laughs> everything in between it's just it's so trippy uh we've got ki hui ki hu kwan ki hu kwan in his first always... in his first major film role since the goonies wow i mean he's done other yeah. things since then like head of the class Tales of Zero was, Man, he was in, uh, I think in Zero Man was the last movie he was in. Yeah, but he never crazy. had a role this meaty since Data. I yeah. Think. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, like, yeah, Data and Short Round. You know, yeah, it's crazy. Um, but I'm so glad that he's still working. He's he's a really cool guy. I actually, <laughs> well, I actually still a lot got of, it. Actually, still got it. Actually, he was actually he was because for a long time he was working more behind the scenes mm -hmm. as like a, as a stunt coordinator in other capacities. Okay. Uh. So and he and the he was saying in an interview like he 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 said that after the eighty after the eighties, mm. uh, he was had he had a hard time finding work as an actor because right. there wasn't a lot of roles for Asian actors in Hollywood back then. Right. And that, like in the wake of movies like Crazy Rich Asians, mm -hmm. um, he decided to give it another go. Okay. And he's probably one of the yeah he's like one of those child actors who actually managed he's definitely made yeah. that that jump from like child actor to uh to, a, to he a, got over that hump that, yes. that, that lull period he, he missed he missed the 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 bad years of of acting when when uh, <laughs> he turned to drugs and go crazy right uh, he, he was in a movie he was in a movie with uh, Corey Feldman who was a big druggie yeah uh, well yeah he, it was it was it, you know he, he he didn't work with him so yeah. <laughs> I'm just I'm I, one of the main reasons I wanted to see this movie was for his performance. Yeah, no, I remember when I, I remember seeing the trailer for this, I, seeing the trailer for this, and I was like, "Is that who I think?" It, and then I saw his name yeah. uh, in the in the trailer in the trailer yeah. cards. I'm like, "Oh, sh I'm like, oh shit, I got to check. I definitely need to see this." And also, oh, we've got, uh, uh, I believe, James Hong, Jamie Lee Curtis. Yeah, yeah, we got a wonderful uh, Jenny cast. Slate, Harry Shum Jenny Jr. Slate, who actually looks gorgeous in this, by the way. She's <laughs> she, she, she's not in it enough. No, but no. She, uh, Michelle Yeoh keeps calling her big nose. Big nose. <laughs> but yeah, she's great. James Hong. Hong. Um, and then and, Stephanie Sue is the daughter. Yeah, yeah. yeah she, who yeah. plays a pivotal uh, role yes. in this uh, without giving too much away. She's great. She's really, uh, you know, she's a fantastic young actress. I want to see more of her. Yes. Yeah. Um, written and directed uh, by... She's by, on, I, I believe she plays an old woman uh, on uh, Aquafina's show, Nora. Oh, oh really? Queens. Oh, that's yeah, fine. I think she plays <laughs> an old woman, which is amazing. Because I, I'm like, where do I know her from? And I'm like, oh my god, she plays an old woman on that show. Like very one of funny. Her friends. She's, She's got great. range for sure, and her outfits in this are great too. Yeah. Um, oh, oh my god. The if this if this fucking movie doesn't win costume design <laughs> in the Oscars this year, I don't. Costume, I think costumes, makeup, special Vi effects, visual effects yeah. for sure should be. I mean, on, honestly, like, like I'm throwing down the gauntlet right now. Like, I know we still got like nine months of movies left or whatever, but pff, this is a front runner right yeah. here. Best I think picture. This is officially we on the top it. 10. Same I, here. I think it's on the top, maybe even top five. We found it. <laughs> um, and I just want to talk quickly about the Daniels, uh, Dan Kwan and Daniel Scheinert. Who were the oh, director, man. writers, directors of this? And they were, and uh, with the, at the screening I went to, they were there doing a Q and A session after the movie. Nice, nice. Uh, their other big film, uh, Swiss Army Man, which I mentioned earlier, fantastic. They just got this brilliant visual style, and uh, mm -hmm. they they really are the perfect directors to best tackle. best use of Daniel Radcliffe in a movie. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I, I love I love Radcliffe. I think he's great. Yeah. Uh, he was he was I mean. You know him, 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 and Paul Dano in that movie. I mean, what a, what a, 
What a remarkable was, pair of unusual characters. I mean, I was never a Harry Potter fan, but he's yeah. definitely his. Yeah, I've never, I've never even seen he, one. <laughs> but he's taken, he's taken, he's definitely gotten a lot of interesting roles since, since, yeah, since he put away the wall. Yeah, yeah. yeah for sure. The um, first thing I saw him in post, post Harry Potter was when he, when he played William S. Burroughs mm-hmm. in, a, in a movie, in a like a biopic. Huh. And I thought it was so phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, I oh, can't remember the name of the movie, but uh, I can't think of the time he did a western a couple years back, which is pretty good. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. And uh, the names are escaping me, but he did a, a action a, movie, a romantic uh, dramedy as well. He's got he could do pretty much any genre, basically. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's um, um, uh, he was most recently in Lost City, uh, a movie that, that was yeah. a thousand times funnier than it should have been. Uh, I actually really enjoyed that film. I could not believe how much I laughed during that movie. Did it have the same energy and feel as Jungle Cruise? It it kind of did. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's what I'm hoping uh, for. Same director, right? No, just kind of, but the oh. same setting. You know? Okay. Yeah, but uh, yeah, no, it, it was a lot of fun, and uh, you know, Sandra Bullock is still got you know, it's like you, you, I haven't seen her in anything, and God knows, I can't remember the last movie I saw her in. Like the blind side, maybe. I think the blind side. I should have bird, 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 <laughs> bird. Oh, the one where she's uh, blindfolded, yes. right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh yeah, right. I still yeah. haven't seen that. Yeah, that's right. But yeah, I mean, even that was a while ago. Um, but it, you know, it was it was good to see, you know, and uh, yeah, it was a lot funnier than I thought it would be. But Daniel Radcliffe, uh, he's he's ridiculous. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I definitely I want to see more of his work. I, I I look forward to everything he does, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. and I'm glad he turned down Harry Potter <laughs> to come back and reprise his role. Um, so. but back to yeah. everything. This movie, it's just so trippy. Yes, it's the ultimate trip, I'd say. Really, uh, I I and it, it's and there's so many elements to it, and it's it's also a really beautiful story about family. I mean, especially mother daughter. Uh, relationship it's like it, it 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 works on so many levels right this movie it, it was uh it's just like every I, I feel like every moment you expect something and then it gives you something else right and uh it, it just kept twisting and turning and uh i mean it was it was a thrill ride it was it was it was a, i mean it was just a, a, an incredible film I'm i mean it's ordinary it's, it's a lot of fun. Got a, it's got a lot of heart. Yeah. And uh, I'll, 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 but, but I was mentioned that there was one moment in the movie that, um, you know, it's not very, it's not particularly gruesome. It's not very gruesome or anything. It's not gruesome or anything, but, uh, uh, but it was a moment involving Kihu Kwan uh, that, oh God, it just Ooh, made me squirm. No spoilers. And just thinking about it. Uh, I know. And this, and this is from someone like, you know, you know me, I watch a lot of gory, I, I enjoy right, right, watching right. gory, violent horror movies. And this, this was, wasn't gory, but it was freaky. Yes. It was disturbing. Yeah. My whole audience was squirming at the scene. Yeah. Yeah. That was different. Yeah. I think I audibly shouted. <laughs> I was like, oh no. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Everyone uh, in the theater. Yeah. That, that one scene. That was the worst, and uh, uh, and then there's just some shit in there that's mm. like over the top hilarious. Yes, yeah. uh, I mean, <laughs> the, yeah, the hot dog I, fingers. I mean, <laughs> hot dog fingers. The any any of the scenes that take place in the world where we have hot dog fingers <laughs> or rock, uh, or, rock mean, or we're rocks. <laughs> you know what? Uh, the only other director I can even imagine touching this type of of movie would probably be Edgar Wright. Yeah, like right, or maybe like 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 Gilliam in his prime. Ooh, yes, that would be insane if they did this movie in the eighties. <laughs> <That would be, laughs> yeah. If that, this was his follow up to Time Bandits, oh, double, <laughs> double feature with those two. Yeah, I uh, love it. But whereas, if I feel like if the Wachowskis had done it, there'd have been a lot more, um, like. Mm-hmm. It, it would have been a lot more. I feel like if this if it had been if you've done if, say the Wachowskis had done it, it'd probably be like two and a half hours of like just special effects, yeah, and trying to say something, but it's like only vaguely getting the point across. And then, yeah, and then and then afterwards saying, "Oh, the whole movie's about this." It's like no, it's not. <laughs> but um, uh, the entire theme of family is really hit yeah, on. I mean, yeah, very well. Oh, 
And, 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 and it, when you walk out of it, it definitely has you thinking about like your own, what, like, you know, yeah. it makes you wonder about, about all the possibilities in your own life. Mm-hmm. Could it could be. Yeah. It's, uh, oh, I, I'm still digesting it. Yeah. I, I saw like two I, nights ago. I want to see it again. I, I want to see it again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely have to, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Gotta, gotta go back, revisit. But um, one of the best cinematic experiences yes. lately, for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, and James Hong was hilarious. Yeah. Oh, Jamie Lee Curtis, yeah. I, yes, she was excellent. <laughs> as, <laughs> I as mean, it, it's, you know, it's been a while since we got like a good, like comedic, but like also not so comedic. Like it's like hmm. a good Jamie Lee comedic in the on Halloween. Halloween. <laughs> Like this, her range, yeah. It's, it's been like, a while. I, I can't think of a, her first non Halloween movie since uh, Christmas with the Cranks. Yeah. <laughs> right? But um, she was perfect yeah. in this. Yes. Um, yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> so uh, I think it's safe to say this is on everyone's radar. Yes. Yeah. I mean, if, if you don't see this, I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> like, and if you don't you're like, like, I'm not, I'm not suggesting you yeah. see this, I'm demanding you see this. I need this on Blu-ray like right yeah. now. <laughs> yeah. It's this it's is- it's a must have. Yes. It is uh I mean honestly, yeah, like, I mean like I said, I I hands down already think this is like the best picture of the year. I mean, I just I could totally I, mean, I, see it I don't that. know how anyone can top this. <laughs> it's, it's so weird to have a movie come out in in Mar- March, April, what are we? March. April. Yeah. March and April uh uh, to be this caliber, like I, I mean, not a Marvel movie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, yeah. And, and a non-Marvel I'm, movie to be this caliber, right? Like, I mean, and also, I could, I would say compared to Marvel or DC, a much more nuanced take right. on the multiverse, right? And yeah, just, yeah. Just totally original and and fresh. You yeah, know? Mm-hmm. definitely got to see this a few more times to just let it soak. Yeah. In. So great, so great. And um, of course, it is produced by the Russo brothers. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. so it, it, it's got its tie into the, the marvel cinematic universe well besides you know apart from you know michelle yo having right. and having her own marvel credentials right <laughs> okay so this and sonic to the sonic the hedgehog 2 are both playing in theaters right now um so yeah guys check out both yes. films they're fantastic um and we've got some coming attractions this week uh, we've got uh, a star-studded cast in The Northman, uh, and it's from visionary, visionary director Robert Eggers, stars Alexander Sar- Skarsgård, Nicole Kidman, uh, Anya Taylor-Joy, uh, Ethan Hawke, Bjork, and Willem Dafoe. So, yep. um, Bjork in her first role since Dancer in the Dark. Okay, well, there you go. Uh, also, we've got uh, an upcoming Under the Radar review, which I will be seeing tomorrow night at, at AMC Fresh Meadows. If you uh, if you can get it, snag a ticket, uh, we're going to talk after the show. <laughs> uh, the unbearable weight of massive talent. Oh, uh, nice! Or, or the yes. I like to call it the Nicolas Cage show. <laughs> so uh, we're gonna, we're going to have fun with that review for sure. Uh, we also have an animated film called The Bad Guys, which I've seen some a- advertisements in the subway for. Uh, you've got mm-hmm. Sam Rockwell in the lead uh, the voice there, yeah, right. so it's got some potential. Um, a French drama fantasy film called Petite Maman. Uh, we've got a drama horror film called We're All Going to the World's Fair. Uh, a drama called Hit the Road, and a comedy called E Como Es El. So that's what's coming up this week, guys. Um, any of those movies uh, aside from the Nick Cage show? Uh, uh, anything pique your interest? Maybe we're all going to the World's Fair. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. The, uh, I mean, obviously, Nick Cage. I'm yeah. down for. Uh, yeah. Bad Guys has been on my my kids' radar uh, for a while. <laughs> they they've been dying to see that movie. So it looks uh, good. It looks cute. So we're, we're excited yeah. for that. Um, you know, speaking of Aquafina, she's she's a voice of the tarantula in that movie. Wasn't there a, an animated film with a similar? premise with the with the villains that become well, uh, i mean it's kind of like zootopia really okay where it's like it's like zootopia meets uh wreck it ralph where it's like bad guys who want to be good guys yeah mm-hmm. yeah so that's what i'm pro- yeah i think that's the one so, so okay <laughs> the bad guys potential there it'll yeah. probably have a good score um, yeah the animated films usually have decent scores mostly by Hans zimmer 
So. Yeah, it's DreamWorks. So <laughs> yeah, so there you go. Um, okay, guys. So we got a couple minutes left. I just wanted to just go around. Any any plugs? Anything going on, Mr. Bennett? Um, well, let's see. I recently, uh, well, we, you, uh, we, you, uh, you were there on set with me. Uh, we, mm-hmm. did, we, uh, mm-hmm. I was recently, uh, <clears throat> both of us were recently extras in a movie, co- in a movie from Troma called Bring on the Damned, <laughs> uh, directed by, written and directed by Brandon Basham, who's also the writer of, of Shakespeare Shitstorm. Nice. <laughs> and that was a lot of fun, by the way. Um, yes. I haven't been an extra in a movie in, in a while. So I want to thank you for extending the invitation to me because that was really, oh you're welcome that was a lot of fun and welcome to the tr- welcome to the trauma team yay <laughs> I uh I could buck I could knock that off the bucket list so. <laughs> excellent uh, anything else you wanna um anything else um <laughs> that's it for now that's it for yeah okay that, okay I think that's it for now um I did re- I did pick up a bunch <clears throat> of comic book comic books earlier today okay. Uh, including Batman 89 number five, nice. uh, which has been, which is basically exploring what a third Batman movie under Tim Burton might've been like. Mm-hmm. It, what, how many are, is that the final one or are there more coming? This is the second to last issue. Okay. Wow. So six issues. Okay. I, I, I gotta, I'm behind in my comic book collecting. I'll be honest with you. But, um, and uh, yeah, and then I, I think I told you this before the show, we, I picked up a whole bunch of, mm-hmm. of uh, old Ghostbusters comics from the late eighties and early nineties. Uh, which I'm looking for. Those I'm looking forward to. Like, I'm especially, especially now because I found out that that uh, in the wake of of Ghostbusters Afterlife, mm-hmm. um, I like Ghostbusters comics have gone out of print. Mm-hmm. So now, do you prefer in uh, you you prefer paper or digital? Uh, I mean, I do both. I do mm-hmm. both. Okay. Uh, digital just to save space. Yeah. Uh, but I'll buy physical if it's something I real that I really like to have and have in phys- have like. Mm-hmm actual copy of mm-hmm. okay oh and uh sneak peek we are going to be seeing uh batman returns at uh, the nighthawk cinema 30th in, anniversary screening yes in uh, williamsburg this sunday um that i might there might still be tickets left guys so snag them while you can and um uh, i i just love this movie it's just so much fun yeah um this would be the second actually third time i've seen it on a big screen First time, obviously, I was seven years old. It was yep. amazing. And this will be like the second Batman movie with fe- featuring Penguin and Catwoman that we're seeing in theaters this this past over this over this past month. <laughs> Very different takes on the Dark Knight, but both amazing. As well as his foes. Yes. So that'll be a lot of fun. Um, I just want to give a shout out to the Nighthawk Cinema. Two locations: one in Williamsburg, Brooklyn; the other in Prospect Park. Uh, you can get you know you can get alcoholic beverages. You get like entrees. Uh, while you're watching the movie and this is a great uh, cinematic experience um, that rivals no other. Uh, Mr. Roran, are you a, a fan of the Nighthawk? I have never actually been to the Nighthawk. Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, really? Yeah. I can't rack my, I, I'm racking my brain right I now. Know. I'm very surprised. I mean, I, you know, I, I don't really uh, go to go to say much to see movies. Okay. Yeah, you know, it's like I live on the island, so it's i mean i do too but then again i'm on but yeah. i'm but along, you're also much closer to <laughs> i'm closer to the city the city okay. than i am but uh yeah i mean it's it, it's a rare occasion i mean uh you know i've been to alamo a couple times in in brooklyn uh but uh yeah I, I've, I've never made it out to the nighthawk yet so All right. you gotta go yeah yeah that's i mean i've i've been meaning to for like a decade, I just haven't gotten there. But um, one of these days. <laughs> well, hopefully soon, uh, if you know. Yeah. I mean. yeah. <laughs> How about you, Mr. Roran? How is the island of pickles treating you? Good. Uh, insanely, uh, we're a year old now. Isn't that nuts? That's crazy. That's crazy. Pickle Island is now a year old. Uh, yeah, you know, just living, selling comics and DVDs and CDs and pickles and <laughs> having a good time and uh you know it's it's you know days like today it's a nice day you get to have the door open and if the have that cool air come in and yeah. i just want more of that and less of these these cold ass spring days i want more days like today yeah and I want, 
Uh, you know, New, New York was gorgeous today. Yes. Oh. Yeah. So, you know, I uh, I look good for I look forward to good uh, walking around and uh, <laughs> stopping to get some pickles and comics winner. So I love it. Um, do, do you have a do you have a kitchen set up now? Right, you've had that for oh uh, the one in Glen Cove has has a kitchen okay. doing uh, you know all kinds of fried pickles. They we we do uh, hot dogs. We do all kinds of he's always trying new stuff fried green tomatoes he's done and all that stuff so you know that's cool pretty cool well as always i always say it but i, w- I will make my way there eventually i promise <laughs> eventually eventually <laughs> all right guys well i want to thank you again this was amazing um as for my plugs um if you want to check out uh previous episodes of under the radar you can just check out the youtube channel under the radar and just subscribe and share and for new episodes of the show uh you can tune in to manhattan neighborhood network the lifestyle channel also on cable channels fios 34 rcn 83 and spectrum 56 and 1996 so check those out uh, we always have uh, fresh content up uh, for your viewing pleasure so, Mr. Bennett, Mr. Roran, thank you so much. Uh, this was great as always. Good to see you. And always, uh, a pleasure. always a pleasure. Yep. Yeah, Same. I'll, I'll see you guys soon. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm Randy Younger. This has been Under the Radar. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Take care. <laughs>